Hi folks, welcome to IJ Impact. Today we're going to be talking about what is actually day 13 and 14 of the Paul Floris, Ruben Floris, Christine Smart trial, although doesn't it seem many, many days more than that? But it is, so there, so let's get on with it. On Monday, that's August the 15th, 2022, in the court when everyone was gathered together, the tally count, and that's what I like to call the juror pool anyway, was at five alternates remaining on Paul's jury and three remaining on Ruben's jury. Now that's quite an attrition rate as both started with eight alternates. Let's hope this stabilises somewhat as there is still quite a way to go with this trial. And so to the trial. Our first witness of the week was investigator JT Camp, who took the stand, and we've seen him a few times already. Now he goes through some of the local geography of the Santa Lucia Hall, interior, exterior, bathrooms, common areas, etc. And he also goes through the same detail for Muir Hall. Now on cross-examination, Sanger quizzes him about changes that might have been made between 1996 and today. And while there were a few, these were primarily what I'd call cosmetic things like the size of the TVs and payphones being around, etc. He also asked about the layouts of the showers, which Camp was able to answer as he'd actually attended Cal Poly. We then had Adela Morris, who is a professional dog handler. Buckle up for the ride on this one, because if you didn't know anything about dog handling, cadaver dogs and the processes used in their deployment, you certainly will after we go through this witness testimony. So Adela Morris is a professional dog handler, as I've said, who has specialised in human remains detection since 1986. In that time, she's trained and certified six dogs and is currently training her seventh. And yes, Adela was one of the handlers that were called to investigate at the Cal Poly campus. At the time, she had Choya and Cirque, her trained dogs, with her. Choya was her main dog at the time and was trained to the state standard and beyond when it came to human remains detection. Quite a bit of time was spent by Puverell for the prosecution going through Adela's experience with human remains dog detection. This appeared quite extensive and included handling, training, educating and working with various law enforcement agencies. What are human remains? Well, Puverell established for the jurors that human remains are everything that constitutes the process of decomposition. Bones, blood, everything that makes up a human, as Adela put it. Adela has raised several dogs who were more interested in hunting critters than detecting human remains. Those dogs were discontinued and not certified. We domesticate dogs, but they still contain the knowledge of the hunt. For some dogs, it is very hard, she said. A search partner is definitely not a pet, she continued. She started her career as part of the California Rescue Dog Association, or CARDA. This is a volunteer organisation that works with county offices of emergency services. Whilst it's not state-ran, there are state standards to certify both the handlers and the dogs. She went through the standards, noting that California was one of the leading states in drafting statewide standards versus jurisdiction by jurisdiction. There is quite an intensive training program that the dogs go through. Dogs are trained four days a week for four to six hours per day in small groups. Trainers set up problems for each other and blind tests and training scenarios take place in old buildings, wilderness and real waterways to train the dogs for different situations. What about the human remains training? Well, Adela described how cadaver dogs are trained to find human remains. They use real human remains such as bones, teeth and pieces of the body in different stages of decomposition to help the dogs focus on those particular scents. She went on to say interestingly that they also train the dogs to avoid false positives. So they use what are called negatives and these are things like semen, baby diapers, animal products, used Kleenex, live human scent and beef and dogs are not rewarded for finding negatives. On the tests, during a certification, they immediately fail dogs if they alert on a negative, and dogs can take the test later once the handler corrects their mistakes. The dogs are also, in quotes, blood trained, she added. Blood is an extremely powerful scent item. You could take a drop of blood and fill a room. The scent of blood is very overwhelming, so it takes very little blood for the dogs to pick it up. She went on to say that dogs will alert strongly to blood, and she also trained her dogs to alert on surfaces where blood was located but has since been disinfected with cleaning products. 
She also explained how a change in dog behaviour can give more information than an alert itself. The alert, she said, can signal the source of the scent or where it's strongest. Our observation of the dog is everything, she said. We are watching for that change of behaviour which is characteristic when they are with their target scent. Changing behaviour can vary by dog, but general behaviour changes when a dog finds its target scent, including slowing down, deep breathing, and what is called vacuuming, which is a term handlers used when the dog is smelling intensely. In terms of her experience as a handler, she estimated that she had done over 300 law enforcement type searches, and for the last 15 years she specialised in human burials. Her second dog, which was a red border collie named Chuya, spelt C-H-O-L-L-A, was certified in 1995 and worked until 2000. She says that Chuya was certified in advanced cadaver search and made several finds in her career, including a deceased kidnap victim, a 10-year-old homicide victim, victims of a chemical plant explosion and victims of a plane crash. Choya had to retest every year to remain certified and never failed a certification test. At that time she had one of the most extensive trainings that were available. We then got to the events under scrutiny in 1996. On June the 29th 1996 she was dispatched to Cal Poly from the San Francisco Bay Area. When she arrived her first assignment was to search a reservoir away from campus. As we've already heard, she bought Choya and another certified collie named Cirque. She was then assigned to search Santa Lucia Hall. Now the search was done blind, meaning that she and other handlers were not told if another handler had already searched that area or what the results of those searches might have been. She also didn't know any specifics of suspected locations. We want to search knowing nothing, so all we have is the dog's nose, she said. On that specific day, another handler had actually previously searched the dorms, but she didn't know that until later. Now, as part of their blind search procedures, handlers are given no information about search locations or the reasons being assigned to them. She says that she opened the southwest door of Santa Lucia Hall and ordered Choya to find human remains. Adela stayed at the entrance. Each dog is trained with its own unique alert, Choya was trained to jump up on Adela and then lead her to the target scent. In Santa Lucia, she says that Choya ran down the hallway at full speed as she put it and immediately made a U-turn and started concentrating on some of the doors. She became very methodical and slow, sniffing carefully around the cracks of doors and door handles. Choya then ran back to Adele and jumped on her before leading her to the dorm room 128, scratching at it. Adele says she told law enforcement that Choya wanted to be let inside room 128 and the door was unlocked and opened. She again gave Choya the commands to find human remains. She was extremely focused and she went to the left side of the room. She was literally vacuuming up the scent, Adele said. It tells me that my dog A has a target odour and B she was trained to find the strongest source if possible. She almost immediately came back to me, jumped on me, and continued to show me the left side of the room. Choya was primarily interested in the bed. I would say at least a dozen times she showed me that bed. She was very enthusiastic. Choya never settled on one specific spot on the bed, but alerted to the whole bed in general. She really wanted to communicate when she jumped harder and higher. She would literally use my body to jump off, push off, and that's a very enthusiastic alert. Now, just in case you hadn't realised yet, room 128 was Paul Florist's dorm room. Hmm. And yes, it was on Paul's side of the dorm room that Choya also showed an interest in the desk area. I had no doubts that she gave her alert that she gives when she detects human remains, and it was a very strong alert, Adela said. She was very clear. After this, they left the room and continued to search the residence hall, but Choya didn't alert to any other rooms or areas of the dorm building. Morris said that her second dog, Cirque, remained in her vehicle while Choya searched Santa Lucia Hall. Now, after Choya's alert, Morris said that she retrieved Cirque from the car to search the dorm, while an officer restrained Choya. Cirque was very reliable, but I had more connection with Choya. Choya had more training than Cirque, 
but Cirque met all of the standards. Cirque was let loose in Santa Lucia Hall and also made a U-turn in front of the door of room 128. Inside, Cirque alerted to the bed on the left side of the room. Cirque didn't alert to any other areas of the residence hall either. And she said room 128 was the only dorm both dogs alerted to the target scent. She was then asked to take the dogs to Smart's room and she said she wasn't sure if she used both dogs during the search but she did know that she used Choya who didn't alert to anything at the new location. They then went back to the Santa Lucia dorm one more time where Choya once again alerted and this time to the bed frame on the left side of room 128. The mattress had been removed from the room by then, she added. She was then asked to have both Choya and her other search dog Cirque search the dumpster outside the dorms, although she cautioned that she was, in quotes, not confident in what could be found because it was, in quotes, a very contaminated place. Both the dogs gave interest alerts while searching the dumpster, but they weren't strong alerts, she said. In quotes, at this time there was almost nothing in the dumpster, just some garbage stuck to the bottom. A number of juror questions were then asked, including whether the dogs would alert to blood on a bandage, and Adele said yes they would. Another question was about the certification and whether the dogs would fail if they had a false positive find during testing, and yes they would, they would be disqualified from certification. On cross-examination, Robert Sanger for the defence began his line of questioning with a statement question about the dog's likeliness to be attracted to tri-tip. In response, Adele said the dogs would want to eat it. Now this obviously relates back to some extent about Sanger's questioning about whether there was a fridge in the room and obviously he's trying to go down the lines that the dogs may have alerted to food from the fridge. Anyway, on this point I have to profess ignorance. What is a tri-tip? Well, I had to look it up and I'm sure my American followers will know straight away that apparently it's a triangular cut of beef from the lower part of the sirloin. Here we'd call it a ramp tail and by the way the sirloin generally is known as the butcher's cut. Sanger tried to ask if Floris dorm room was the only room with red police tape. Obviously it would stand out to Adele and the dogs. But Adele responded that there was nothing in the door or around the door, nothing to distinguish one dorm room from another. Sanger then asked about Adela's qualifications and he pointed out that the dogs are certified by a private organisation with no government oversight. Adela responds that CADA is a private organisation but they are deployed by the Office of the Emergency Services. You're a volunteer, right? She was asked. Correct. And unpaid? Correct also, she responded. Sanger then focused a lot of his cross-examination on a letter Adela wrote to another HRD dog expert, Andy Redman, following the Cal Poly search. She says that she sought Redman's advice because investigators asked her what substances they should look for when evaluating the mattress. Sanger then asked her about cases that she'd been involved in previously, and in quotes, the cases you talked about that were successful were cases where you actually located a body or body part, correct? Adele says she doesn't understand. And Sanger goes on to say, In the Christine Smart's case you didn't find anything. Poovril objected to this, but he was overruled. Eventually, Adela was able to respond and said, There was no physical evidence that we were aware of. Rolling forward to 1997, Adele says that her dogs also searched Susan Flores' home, and at the time she didn't know whose home it was, but during that search her dogs showed interest in an area of the backyard where trash cans had been stored, but it wasn't a full alert. Now this search was actually set up by the Smart family's civil attorney Jim Murphy, we learned. Adela says that she returned to Cal Poly with her dogs in 1998 and 1999 to search the Performing Arts Centre and an admin building, but her dogs didn't alert on those occasions. Did she discuss the results of any searches with the other dog handlers? And Adela says that they discussed it on the drive home, but once the search was completed. Is it important to avoid bias in writing reports, Adele was asked, and she responded, the way I write the report is more factual. I did this, the dog did this. It's not my opinion, she said. 
Sanger then asked about the dumper search. You said the dogs were asked to search the dumpster, but you weren't sure how accurate it would be. You said the dogs were licking something on the bottom of the dumpster, and Adele responded, alerting and licking are not the same thing. There was an alert to a plastic bag at the bottom of the dumpster, and she gave the bag to investigators, but dumpsters can be confusing for dogs. You could have menstrual products in the dumpster, for example. And that was just the first day of the week. On the Tuesday, we had another alternate from Paul's jury excused from the case. So that brings the number of alternates for his case down to four. So we then had the other defence attorney, Harold Misick, who asked Adela if dog's alert is subject to interpretation by their handler. And she responded, I specialised in reading my dog's behaviour. I have trained them for a specific scent, and I recognise when they have a change in behaviour when they find that scent. Where were you in the room when she alerted, she was asked. I stayed outside the door. This gives her, i.e. the dog, freedom to go where she wants to go. She right away went to the left side and came back to me. Then I went more into the room and she continued to search the left side. Smisik then asked, how do you keep from demonstrating your bias with the dog? And she responded, I did not ask whose dorm it was or which room number. I initially stayed at the entrance door. She went down the hall, quite a long hall, and was some distance from me. I let her direct the search. Was Choya rewarded after the search? I did not reward her. We do not reward them unless they find a dead body, she responded. Misik put it to Adele. There has to be a solid there to give off that odour, correct? And she responded, or something that was there originally that gave off that scent. Misik continued, but there was no physical evidence there. And Adela responded, not at the time of the search, no. Misik said, you believe that a dead body can transfer a residual odour to another product and that can then last for 30 days and your dog can detect it. Now Poovril objects at this point and Misik withdraws the question. Misik then goes through Adele's CV and career history as well and picks out various parts of it and says, you didn't find that body, you didn't find that body, you didn't find that body. You listed all these cases, but they're unsuccessful cases. Poovril objects, but and Misik responds, I'm pretty much done, Your Honour. So we then had a redirect where Poovril asked Adele to clarify whether her dogs would alert on tri-tip. And Adele says that beef is a negative. Her dogs are trained on it and would not trigger alert. My dog would probably try to eat it, though, she said. Sanger then proceeded down this line that all of the dog handlers are friends, etc., with one another, and said to Adele, After this search, you wrote a note to your friend Andy Redman. And Adele responds, Andy is not my friend. And Sanger said, You were on a first name basis, but he's not your friend. And the response was, He's an expert in his field. Could the dogs have been alerting to each other? Sanger asked Adele. My dog was the first in the room, so it couldn't have, was the response. Well, Wayne's dog alerted to the door, yes. And in case you're not clear, Wayne here is Wayne Berens, who's another dog handler who was also there at the search, and he gets called after Adele's finished. It was put to Adele, and you do not know what the dogs were alerting to? And she responds, my dogs have been trained to alert to very specific things, so why I know when her behaviours correlate to that specific item. Except for when you have false positives, Sanger asked, apparently to nobody. He carried on. Some of your dog's certifications were given to you by your friends at CADA, and the response was, we were members of the same professional organisation. We did not have dinner together. We then had a juror question, you don't know what it was that Choya found or alerted to because the testing is done by somebody else. In this particular case, you didn't see anything, but a lab may later on be able to find something. That's correct, Adele responded. Another juror question was whether any research had been published since 1996 that would have changed Adela's opinion about her dog Choya's reaction. She answered she couldn't recall reading anything that would change her mind. And finally, the last juror question was if human vomit could cause the dogs to alert, and Morris said she didn't really know the answer to that question. 
she was excused just before 2 p.m. The second witness to give testimony was Wayne Brehens, a professional dog handler also, and he was called to the stand and Poovrell begins by asking him how long he'd been a certified dog handler, to which he responds 31 years, and he was also present for the June 29, 1996 search at Cal Poly with his dog Sierra, a yellow Labrador. Sierra had been trained since 1990 for wilderness searches before additionally certifying for cadaver searches in 1996. Poovrell again asked about the certification process and he said that the standards are set by an organisation called CADA and they certify the dogs. Brehens and Sierra ultimately completed six different certifications in search and rescue. When he arrived in June 1996 he was first assigned a two to three block area west of the dorms. It wasn't till Sierra got to the perimeter of the dorms that she locked onto a scent, putting her paws up onto a window on the first floor of Santa Lucia Hall. Because of strong crosswinds that day, Brehan says the source of the scent seemed to be coming from inside the building. He asked to be let into the Santa Lucia Hall, and inside Sierra alerted to the door of room, you guessed it, 128. He said that he had no prior knowledge of whose dorm room that was. When it was opened, Sierra went to the left side of the room and ran back to me and alerted. She had a clear and unambiguous signal. Sierra put both of her paws up and alerted on the mattress several times and Brehens suggested bringing in other dogs to confirm this. Sanger on cross-examination asked Brehens if his occupation before Carter was in, in investing and banking and he responded by saying he was also a trained EMT and Sanger clarified with him that he didn't have a degree in biology. Brehan says that before the Cal Poly search, Sierra had been on 50 plus searches and that no human remains were found in Santa Lucia Hall. She just jumped on the mattress. I can only tell you based on my 30 years of experience what I think the dog is responding to, he said. Brehan's was excused at 4.20 and that was it. And that was also it for the week. The trial is going to resume on August the 24th and it's unclear as to why there's a delay and what the reason for the downtime is, but there you go. Well I hope you found this informative, if you subscribe that would be greatly appreciated and if you hit the notification bell then you won't miss out on future updates on this case and other videos when they're published. Bye for now.